in this uh, segment we'll be talking about the structure of tooth the tooth is made up of three parts on the basis of the segments like the part which is exposed is known as crown the part which is hidden underneath the gums is the neck region and the part which is embedded in the bone is the root. So there are three parts basically that is crown, then the neck part and third is the root. We have discussed this in the earlier uh, videos that in case of human beings the attachment of tooth is thecodont. That means they are properly placed and fitted into cavities or alveoli of the bones. So let us draw the structure of a typical uh, tooth. And this is the bone that we are drawing. And in the bone is present this socket. So this is the alveolus or the depression which is there in the bone. Now this bone generally can be written as alveolar bone alveolar bone because these depressions are known as alveoli but if you want to be very specific if you are drawing the structure which is in the upper jaw then this bone is maxilla and if we are drawing the tooth which is in the lower jaw then the bone would be mandible the bone has this cavity and in this cavity is present this tooth which is properly fitted so now the part which is visible to us and let me draw gums here suppose this is the part which is the gum so now it will be easier for us to label the three parts which we have written down here the part which is visible to us, the white part, is called the crown. The part which is underneath the gums, that means this small area, this is the neck of the tooth. And third, the part of the tooth which is completely embedded in the bone is known as the root part. The root part has these openings and these openings are known as apical foramen. Apical foramen. The opening of the root. Now, the complete tooth structure is three layered. There are three layers. The crown part has an outermost layer which is made up of and that is present only in the crown part. This layer is called enamel. This is enamel, which is the hardest substance in our body. We have used the word substance, not tissue. So enamel is the hardest substance. Let us write down a few important things about these layers and what they are made up of. So enamel. This is hardest substance, most important, hardest substance. Second important thing, it is ectodermal in origin. Then, what is it made up of? It is made up of salts of calcium, that is calcium phosphates. And fluorides. Chemically, it is known as hydroxyapatite. Basically, it has crystalline calcium phosphate. It has crystalline calcium phosphate. And as we have written that it is the hardest substance of the body. We also know that it is a white shiny substance. The white part of our tooth which is visible or of our teeth which is visible is this enamel. It is non-living. 
It is the hardest substance, ectodermal in origin, and it has mainly calcium salts, calcium phosphates, and fluoride. That means fluoride is essential for formation of this enamel. But if fluoride is in excess, it causes mottling of teeth. So here we can write fluoride is essential. But excess causes a condition which is known as mottling where the tooth gets deformed and the enamel part gets irregular and starts to fall off. This is one. Let us draw one more uh, thing here. We have drawn the bone that is the socket in the bone and this blue line is representing the outer layer of the root. There is a cementing layer. So this root is fitted into this with the help of a cementing layer. So a cementing layer binds that or our tooth to that socket. Plus there is one more thing which we will be adding here. That is a membrane. That membrane is known as periodontal membrane. So let us draw that membrane first. The periodontal membrane. So which I am drawing with the greenish color here. So outside this, outside the blue line, there is periodontal membrane. That means the root part is covered with periodontal membrane and between the periodontal membrane and the bone, there is a cementing layer. So here, the red thing which we have drawn is cementing layer and this greenish line which we have drawn here that is the periodontal membrane. This is the outermost layer which is found only in case of crown which we call the enamel. The next layer that is or if we write it as A then B. The second layer is of another substance called dentine. These things are produced or secreted by cells. So in case of enamel, we have to write down the name of the cell and in case of dentine also. Dentine is secreted by odontoblasts. And enamel is secreted by, so let us write here, secreted by cells which are known as ameloblasts. So these are the cells which secrete enamel and odontoblasts are the cells which secrete dentine. Dentine is also hard but it is not as hard as enamel. It is also made up of calcium salts. And it is a slightly pale yellowish substance. Dentine is mesodermal in origin. Mesodermal in origin. Now let us draw this dentine and all the words which are related with tooth. They are called dent. Like the doctor or the person who deals with the tooth tooth structure, problems related with it is known as a dentist. So that is all coming from dent. Even when we make our artificial teeth, that is also known as denture. So that again comes from this word. So here there is this dentine and before we draw the dentine, we will also draw these cells which are secreting the dentine. We said the cells are odontoblasts and these cells are here. So let us draw the cells first and then the material that is dentine. And dentine is present everywhere 
enamel was present only in the crown part. Okay, let us put the labels here. This is dentine and these cells which we have drawn here, these are the odontoblasts. Now there is only the third or the innermost layer which is left and it is known as the pulp cavity. So the C part that is pulp cavity. Pulp cavity is living. It has connective tissues and blood vessels and nerve fibers. So this entire thing is living. It is called pulp. So this inner one is pulp cavity which is filled with connective tissue and we can draw few blood vessels and nerve fibers inside. So the one which I have drawn with red would represent blood vessel and the one which is with black would represent the nerve. So this is blood vessel and with black these are nerve fibers. Now this is what is the structure of tooth. Three parts, the visible part from outside is called crown. The part which is hidden underneath the gum is the neck region and the part which is embedded in the bony part that is in the bone. So here also this would be the bony part. So in the bone part that is the root and every tooth has three layers. The outermost layer is of enamel. Enamel is found only in the crown region. It is dead material or non-living material secreted by cells which are known as ameloblast, ectodermal in origin and it is made up of salts of calcium, mainly calcium phosphate, crystalline calcium phosphate. Fluoride is also essential but in limited quantity. If fluoride is in excess then that would damage the enamel and it is known as mottling of teeth. The second part which is again in the maximum amount that is dentine. It is not very white, it is slightly pale. It is mesodermal in origin and secreted by again special cells which are known as odontoblasts. These layer or cells which we have drawn here, these are the odontoblasts. The innermost area is a cavity which is called pulp cavity and it is filled with connective tissue it is filled with connective tissue, it has blood vessels and nerves and it is considered as living because wherever there are blood vessels and neurons or nerves that is where the sensation can be received. At the base that means at the base of the root there are narrow openings which are known as apical foramen. Now this is what is a typical tooth. And in the previous section, we talked about various types of teeth and when we come to just the structure, we can take any kind of tooth. We can take the structure of incisor, canine, premolar or anyone. Only difference would be the upper part here it is flat and the lower side has two root canals or two roots. So that is the only thing which is going to vary. Depending upon the tooth, it can have a single root, it can have two or three. And the shape of the crown would also be different. So this is the typical structure of our